Dwayne Vermeulen is an absolute beast of a rugby player. Vermeulen charging into Puto Ali'i. Talk about exploding in the contact. But he has not had it easy throughout his career. He lost his dad at the age of seven. He had to step up for his own family. He stepped up for South Africa as well on numerous occasions. He's achieved so much. Today we're here at his wine farm just outside Stellenbosch to find out what makes Dwayne Vermeulen tick and what keeps him going. Dwayne Vermeulen, thank you very much for joining us on another episode of Open Side. Um, we'd, we'd much rather want to see you on the rugby field, but it's a, it's a pretty cool setting here with a fire in the background. It's a cold day in Cape Town today. Yeah, Jean, thank you. Thank you for hosting us. Um, yeah, it's, well, it's fantastic, you know. The fire is um, actually really nice. Um, you can get kind of lazy, but um, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you again, and uh, yeah, nice to chat to you. Growing up, the Durings, there's a rumor that you played your first rugby game in the Durings and you ran out bare feet with a field that was full of snow. Yeah, true story? Yeah, it's a true story, yes. Um, so, obviously I was born in, in Nalspreit, um, in, the, in the eastern part of South Africa, where it's really hot. And then um, my dad from this side, so moved, uh, moved down to the Cape. And um, we had a farm at, uh, in a little town called Tausrafir. And um, so went to school there, and yeah, obviously my first game in the Durings. Um, it is uh, winter times. It it was really cold. Nowadays it's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I ran out barefoot, barefoot, and um, you know, played in the snow. Half time, you you rub some deep heat under under your feet, and that's <laughs> that's about it. But it was uh, yeah, it was good times, and yeah, you know, that's where where the love for the game started. In 2009, you played against the British and Irish Lions, uh, getting kind of a taste of international rugby. And post that, um, you were always part of the conversation of, you know, when, when the Springboks election came up. Um, but it took you four years after that before you actually made your debut. Um, that day, being selected, talk about being selected for, for the squad initially, then the first test match against Australia, must have been an extremely proud moment. Yes, John. Um, we were sitting there, and you know, once I saw my name on television, I think, <clears throat> I think my mom even took a picture of it. So it's still somewhere in a, on a phone or in an album or something like in that. In the cloud. Yeah, somewhere, yeah. somewhere. But uh, it was, um, yeah, what a feeling, man. It's, it is, it is something, you know, that you would never never really think of but you hope to hope to achieve it but it's it's just surreal it's uh yeah oh, wow. and and <laughs> what a feeling. And, and running running out then for that first test match against australia mm, do not, you, do, uh, do, were the nerves a little bit more than for other games yeah there were there were a lot of nerves but um you know i had my mom there for my first test for my debut um you can remember and um obviously the the thing is some guys are really lucky to to have a victory on their first test. Um, unlucky for us, it wasn't. Um, it didn't go away. Um, hey, hey, I, I got stretched off for my first <laughs> test match, and we lost. So. Um, yeah, but it was it was it was still it was a fantastic experience. Um, you know, in Perth, uh, full stadium, uh, and um, yeah, I, I just enjoyed it. The atmosphere is just really surreal. If we rewind a little bit, um, it wasn't always easy. And you lost your father at the age of seven. What impact did, did that have in your life? Yeah, after, after my dad passed, I think it was, was pretty difficult for my mom. She had to step up, uh, obviously do um, both jobs as parents. We had to step in as a dad as well. And uh, I had a younger sister. My mom had to, you know, do extra jobs, sell extra stuff to, you know, just to keep on supporting us. So it was out early mornings, you don't see her. So I had to, you know, had to get up, help my sister, help with the hair, had to fix ponytails. It wasn't the best ponytails, but she, well, she managed. It was tough, but yes, rugby gave you that little bit of a, a out. Um, I know my dad played um, bit of club rugby, he played for, for Boerland um, when he was younger. Um, so I actually always just wanted to 
to be him and to see if I can make a, the next step and uh, well, how, how can you say surpass the, the whole the whole thing and make my mom proud and actually make my dad proud because I always thought he wanted to become a big rugby player and a big sports a sports guy because it was just it was just in your blood. You settled down in the t in the, in the starting team for the box. Um, next challenge, World Cup. Um, we went to the World Cup in, in 2015, and um, I suppose the, the experience there wasn't wasn't the best one. The, the eventual results not not the best one. Um, what did you what did you learn from that experience going going to that World Cup? Uh, fortunately, we. Um... <laughs> We lost against Japan in the first game. But did that actually happen? Uh, yes, John. Uh... <laughs> Murphy! Here we go! Hester! Come on, Hester! Playing in a World Cup, you know, it's, that's something you, you dream about. and. Uh, I had the opportunity and it was yeah f fantastic yeah we um, played in the quarters um, against Wales and um, beat them and then yeah it was it was an ugly one against New Zealand in the semi but still could have beaten them. Let's get back to the quarter final first. You know you just flashed past it now, but talk us talk us through that pass to Farida Priya to to score uh, the winning try in that quarter final. High pressure situation, uh, not a planned move, and you just decide, okay, I'll, I'll flick it round the back. Wheels have to be stoked for Mullen, picks up and goes, slips away to Curry De Pria, and De Pria for the try! It was eight to nine to the try line, and South Africa are in front. It's an interesting thing, because we, during the week, it was actually a little bit further out. We had a chat about it. I think you were, you were part of the conversation. Um, we said on the on their 10 meters, the winger falls back so we can play into the blind and we'll, we'll make yards. And um, then obviously crunch time uh, in the 22 and we, well, I think I just went with the wheel of the, of the scrum, picked up and uh, I don't know who was the flanker, but he couldn't get me down and I was handing off the, the one guy and Cuthbert came in and I just saw Free in the corner of my eye going to going the, um, going to the touchline, I thought, oh, you know, I'm just going to chuck this ball and hopefully he catches it. And yeah, you know, in the end, it actually all worked out. So it was yeah, you know, good fun. Yeah, just a <laughs> random playground exercise, chucking the ball. You know, in the quarter yeah. final of a of a World Cup. Um, fast forward for four years, and then it's the final of, of the World Cup. Could that Test match, that World Cup final, could that have been played any better by the box? John, it's, it's sometimes just, you know, individual skill, individual brilliance, you know, um, first try, the no look at pass from, from Lucano, um, and then for those guys to finish it, it's just, it's just something different. It's creating small things out of nothing. Yeah, you know, it, it, it couldn't, <laughs> couldn't have gone any better. Yeah, just uh, as a spectator and as a fan, you know, you look at that and you just think, on the day, it was just, it was just spot on. But after 80 minutes of of rugby in a World Cup final, Dwayne Vermeulen emerges as man of the match in the biggest game of anyone's career. It was really unexpected. Um, I was lucky enough to maybe win two turnovers or something like that. Um, you don't really, you won't really say, but if you, you're you working, don't play for that. you don't play for it. Uh, you want to win the World Cup final and you want to win the, the World Cup trophy. So you don't play for a man of, man of the match trophy and a uh, award or something like that. But yeah, to walk away with it was, you know, it's, it's hard work put in, but uh, I must say anyone in that team could have, you could have earned that trophy, and anyone could have received uh, as an individual their their own one because they played such a massive part in that in that whole squad. Uh, the final whistle goes. You, you were champions, uh, and Matt Proudfoot gets close to you, and you give him a, a massive hug. The emotions that followed post that. Yeah, well, I've, I've been working with Matt Proudfoot since, uh, I think, 2010. So 
we, uh, we had a good chat about my dad and things like that. And he said, if he, it looks like I'm carrying a mountain on my shoulders. And when he walked up to me and gave me the hug, he said, just release it. Let go. Uh, let go. It's off, it's off your shoulders. And uh, yeah, I think the tears just followed and it was just a yeah, massive emotional thing. Um, and then obviously it was it was all about my dad and things like that. So it was you know, it was it was really tough for me, but it's lucky he was there to support. Yeah, I suppose a, a, a difficult moment, mm. but a proud moment, an mm. emotional moment before the World Cup started. Did you ever think that the impact that you would have on others, other people's lives would be that big? Just to see the masses, thousands, maybe even millions of people coming out to see you guys and just to be close to the World Cup champions. Coming back from, from a World Cup and winning a World Cup and coming, you know, landing in South Africa and arriving here and you see the masses of people coming out, it's just, it's, it's, it's life changing. It's, it's something different that you, I don't think you can, you can ever dream of something like that because you, you're not expecting anything like that. But the people that comes out, the tears, there's kids crying because, you know, Sia signed his, his, his cap and, uh, you know, Eben signing a, a guy's little a ball and things like that. So it's, it's just the impact you have on kids and people it, it is really life changing, not just for us, but also for them um, because it's, it's inspiring.